Now, the President of Sri Lanka's visit to Britain faced further problems today as Oxford University cancelled his planned address, citing security concerns. President Rajapaksa's government is being investigated by a UN panel for alleged war crimes during the end of the Sri Lankan Civil War. Tonight, the WikiLeaks website has published a secret US memo which reveals that even as the United Nations is gathering evidence, the US ambassador in Sri Lanka considered the president himself to be responsible for many of the war crimes that his country's forces are alleged to have carried out. Our foreign affairs correspondent, Jonathan Miller, has this report. With the president in town, it'll have been a hectic day at the Sri Lankan High Commission, which organized this private trip only to have it fall apart. In his speech tomorrow, President Rajapaksha was to have presented his troubled isle as having left the past behind and opened a new chapter. But that speech isn't going to happen. The raison d'etre for President Mahinda Rajapaksha's private visit to London is now gone. On the advice of Thames Valley Police, the Oxford Union speech has been cancelled, apparently for security reasons. No one Someone close to the delegation has just told me wants to cause a security problem and the prospect of 10,000 of the president's detractors, mostly Tamils, converging on Oxford tomorrow clearly just proved too much. At its heart, this problem boils down to one persistent allegation that President Rajapaksha and some members of his government stand accused of war crimes. That war ended last year with victory over the Tamil Tigers, but Sri Lankan Tamils and human rights groups claim tens of thousands of civilians were massacred. The United Nations is looking into evidence of possible war crimes, and so are the Americans. Of more than 3,000 diplomatic cables sent by the U.S. Embassy in Colombo, as revealed by the whistleblower's WikiLeaks, Channel 4 News has uncovered one marked secret and dated 15th of January this year, in which the U.S. Ambassador, Patricia A. Butenis, tackles the vexed question of accountability for war crimes allegedly committed. There are no examples we know of a regime undertaking wholesale investigations of its own troops or senior officials for war crimes while that regime or government remained in power. She continues with damning candor you never hear in public. In Sri Lanka, this is further complicated by the fact that responsibility for many of the alleged crimes rests with the country's senior civilian and military leadership, including President Rajapaksha and his brothers and opposition candidate General Fonseca. Even though this is a leak, uh, it's, it's certainly indicative of the UN, U.S. position on this and would have a huge significance on the U.N. panel when it finally submits its report regarding the war crimes inquiry. In such a context, there are questions about how appropriate it is that Britain's Secretary of State for Defense, Liam Fox, plans to meet the President while he's here. Dr. Fox has made five trips to Sri Lanka in the past three years while in opposition, each one paid for by the Sri Lankan government. The Ministry of Defense told us tonight that their planned private meeting reflects Dr. Fox's commitment to peace and reconciliation in the country. Peace and reconciliation remain illusory in Sri Lanka, as evidenced by President Rajapaksha's hostile reception at Heathrow on Monday. Tomorrow, Tamil protesters say they'll shift their scuppered Oxford demonstration to the streets of London. Jonathan Miller, we've just received a statement from the US State Department which says it cannot comment on the authenticity of any documents released by WikiLeaks. You can find the whole text on our website.